there's no thing you need that God has not already supplied. When it will come, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But man, when I saw that neuron looking like a plant, looking at Romans 120, realizing all of this work, like, like every time some life challenge bumps up against my faith, bumps up against my hope, and I get a little, I just stop and remember that. Yeah. That my God is the creator. And that's, that is a God we haven't known. We know Jaira and Rafa, but the creator yeah. who actually made every single thing that I need. This book is about the creator. And it is a, the creator's work in a particular area. Yep. But it's, I wanted people to know the creator. Yeah. He is amazing. Yeah. And so I saw that neuron, I saw that plant, and I started studying gardens all through scripture. And so as people walk through this book, it's three things they're going to see. I call Bible, botany, biology. <laughs> you're going to get a scripture. <laughs> Come you, through alliteration. You're going to learn. Hey, still, I'm still a black woman. <laughs> you're going to learn something about a garden that wow. is that is true. And you're going to see it in our biology. Mm. That's a data approach called triangulation. Mm -hmm. In science, when you can't prove something with numbers, measurement numbers, then we have to prove it another way. We call that qualitative research. Mm -hmm. Quantitative research is numbers. Mm -hmm. We have the numbers. You measure it. That's it. We can't argue. Right. But qualitative research, we're looking for the qualities of a thing. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that we affirm that when we don't have numbers is to find the same data showing up in three completely different places. Mm. We call that triangulation, and mm. it is a very powerful proof of mm. data. Mm. So there's nothing in this book that does not echo in biology, Bible, botany when we see it in all these places, and then we realize that one creator is responsible mm. for all of them. Mm. It does give us this insight. It gives us this confidence, understanding how we were made to function. And the fact that our emotional lives are at the center of that, talk about upsetting something. We thought our mind was at the center, mm. but it turns out our heart and our emotions are at the center of mm. how God created us. Mm. And that's why we haven't been able to get right because we've been trying to put the thing back together without realizing that we needed to be putting heart at the center, not mind at the center. So we have been misassembling our parts because the Bible puts the heart at the center. He sa it says that we are a garden and the heart is the soil. And so nothing, nothing in the garden can exceed the health of the soil and nothing in your life can exceed the health of your emotional well-being. Whether you are aware of your emotions, feel them, talk about them, hate them, love them, Nothing in your life can exceed the quality of your emotional well-being. Your spiritual life, your mental life, and your physical, biological life are all planted and growing from the soil of your heart. And that is massive. Especially in church, where we're like, spirit is center, spirit is center. The spirit is the seed. And of course, the seed is, is everything, because yep. what grows, grows from there. But not until it's planted That's right. in the soil. In the soil. Okay. Um, I can promise you with my right hand to God that I have heard everything that you have just said. And <laughs> I need to stop and recognize little Anita. Mm, thank you. Who loved her sister so much that she locked jawed <laughs> a question until she got an answer. For her. For her. Uh, for me and my for you. And for my children. And for your children. And that part. Yep. For my babies. Yep. For my daughter. Yep. For my son. Because first it was fear. What if one of my kids is ill? Mm -hmm. What will do? Mm -hmm. It was fear about what kind of parent I could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Because of all of the narratives that we wrote in an attempt to explain what we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of the narratives were parenting is just hard. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom felt like maybe I just don't have the 
parts to be a good mom and, mm. and that's why she's off. So then I worried that I wouldn't have the parts to be a good mom. So mm-hmm. I brought that fear into my parenting, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. meant as a parent, I have no control over how my kids turn out no matter what I do. So mm. that made me scared of my kids. Mm. You know, like mm. what power do I have? Yeah. What power don't I have? I mean, yeah. it was just so I needed. Yeah. I yeah. needed I did. You I needed, needed answers. It. I did. I did. And I, I, I think I, I'm just celebrating the tenacity because mm. I think people just give up too easy. Mm. See, mm. I, I wanted to be a, a I get very passionate about this. And so my emo might be bursting forth I because I feel it like right on the oh tip. yeah we already it's already like crying it's, around a, here. it's like already behind my <laughs> eyes but be, be, because I wanted to be a homicide detective when I was that's what I went to school for I studied administration of justice like mm-hmm. from four years old that's what I wanted to do in my life and there is something in me I cannot give up on stuff easy mm-hmm. I, and I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about stuff you can't control but I'm talking about like I believe him and I mm-hmm. I trust him and I place my faith in him and I will bug him. I believe the squeaky wheel gets degree gets greased. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. I believe in that. And so there is something in me that when when I feel like th- there even if at an intrinsic level like I can't verbally say like I know God has me on this path and and I know he's telling me but there's just something in me that can't let it go. And I know it's outside of me mm-hmm. that is coming from. And But I feel like it's God, but I can't articulate it. And I just keep going. And then when I tell you, when I wind up getting the revelation after that, mm. it is a treasure yeah. that no one can take away from me. No. I will fight you over it. I w- like I heard it in you when, when the lady was asking you all these questions. It don't matter what you ask. It me, don't fam. matter. When I tell you I found <laughs> this, it's found with a T. There's some stuff that's yeah. just, it ain't found. We it's found. found. It. We I found, found it. I found, I found it. Okay, it's uh-huh. found it. That's what this is. That's what this is. This is listen, pearl a great price. Bought mm-hmm. the whole field. This was it. This is my life is burning down and I can only get one thing out of this burning building. I ran out with this book. I had to birth this thing. But here's an important point. Answers don't heal you. These answers didn't heal me. God healed me. Mm. Because otherwise they would have just... God healed me. A lot of times we think an answer will heal us. It's not in the answer. I had already, God had already healed my heart from the loss. I had grieved what it meant to have been supposed to have a sister, but didn't really get to have a sister and hated her for years because of the illness that I didn't understand. Like, he had already healed my heart. So when he spoke the word that was my answer, that seed fell on ground that was fertile for it. So we got to, it wasn't about me anymore. At that point, it was about other families. It was about how God is seen, known, and understood. It was about him being presented for the incredible God that he is, who created you incredibly and he has a path for healing for you. It wasn't about being right and it wasn't about... God finally telling me why he let this bad thing happen to me. It wasn't about any of those things. It was just about glorifying him. Anita, I, I, I can hear in the spirit. This doesn't happen to me often. I can hear in the spirit people screaming mm. in their souls. I need answers. You need healing. You need healing. And we have to be willing to be healed instead of answered. 100%. And I've, I've said that in, on several occasions, and I say it again today. We have to be willing to be healed instead of answered. That was what started my real walk with him, was when I realized I needed God more than I needed the answers. Because we think the answer is going to make the pain stop. But they rarely do. I had a... I had a um experience as I was a, I was a uh, associate campus pastor at Gateway mm-hmm. and um, it was Mother's Day and you know so they had all the mothers stand up and they were honoring them so after the service I went to like the meet and greet area young lady walked up to me um, 
tears in her eyes. Mm. And she goes, I hate Mother's Day. Mm. And I hate the way you all celebrate mothers on Mother's Day because it compounds the feeling and emotions I have. Yeah. All I've ever wanted to do is be married. All I've ever wanted to do mm. is be a mother. And it's the one prayer I've asked God and it's the one prayer he hasn't answered. And so this day is very painful for me. There's tears streaming down her face. And as she's talking to me, Anita, the mm. Holy Spirit tells me to tell her something. He tells me to tell her two words. And when I hear the words he tells me to tell her, I, t I told the Holy Spirit, I'm not telling her that. <laughs> like, I'm not telling her. Like, there's no way you're going to get me to tell her that. And he goes, tell her. I said, there's no way. I could be smacked in the face. I could be need in the testicles. Like, like not doing it. I'm not doing this. And he will not mm. get off of me on this. Tell her. And I'm like, no, tell her. He doesn't. There's, there's about four minutes. While I'm having this exchange with her, the, the Holy Ghost is just tapping. Right. Oh, I know that you, feeling. You know what I'm saying? It happens in like lightning speed. Yeah, yeah, You've exactly. You've had this whole conversation. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, oh my God. And so I finally said, um, I, I'm so heartbroken for you. And, and I hate that this service brought up this emotion. I said, I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me a word for you, but you're not going to like, I know you're not going to like what he, what he told me. Mm. And she was like, okay. And I said, you're really not going to like what he told me. I promise you. And you was also like, you might not like me. I'm trying, like, right, yeah. exactly. Right. I, I was like, but I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. She said, then tell me. I said, as you were talking, I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me two words for you. Drop it. Wow. She said, what? I know she did. And, and the... Obviously, you're you're afraid to be obedient, but once you're obedient, that's when the boldness comes. Right, right. So I said, "Drop it," and I was, it was Tim. Mm -hmm. Then she said, "What?" And I said, "Drop it." In her face, you could tell, like all of these emotions washed mm -hmm. over her, and like you know what I mean. Ten seconds, like disbelief, anger. Kind of a what the hell, <laughs> like, and then she just said, "Drop it, drop it, drop it." Okay, and it was like this whole thing lifted off of her, like visibly. I could see this thing lift off her face. And she said, okay, thank you. And gave me a hug and walked off. And that was that. As you were talking, that's the only thing that came to me. Because what the Lord was saying was, you want an answer <laughs> and it, that I'm not interested in giving you. And that well, either you can't comprehend or that just won't be good enough. There's no answer good enough for if why you, my mother, why my father, sister, husband, brother, child, th why? There, the, there is no answer good enough for the capital W-H-Y. There isn't. There's no answer good enough. Yeah, and absolutely. so then we're going to be arguing about that. That's like, exactly right. Like, it's too yeah. much stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. And if you were suddenly not in pain, you wouldn't be asking about the answer. Because you think the answer will resolve the pain, but the pain is actually the need. So when the Bible says go boldly before the throne of grace in time of need, like your need, you're asking for the answer because you believe it will meet your need, which is to get out of pain. But if you just go bring your need, I'm in pain. I'm lonely. I'm grieving. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. That's the need. 